In our latest episode, the big day arrives where we pack our bags, say farewell to London, and make our move to the Chateau in France. Although on arrival, we're greeted with more wine backed demolition. What could the end be in sight? Hello. No. It's time to get up. No. <laughs> what are we doing today? Moving. Where are we moving to? Bond. <laughs> you excited? No. Last view, last time. And roll. Bye. Bye. How's it going? Oh dear. Well done. Yeah, good practice with the shuttle. <laughs> This was huge for us. We had been planning this for, for months, if not years. And to say we were nervous is a bit of an understatement. This is a huge change for both of us. And not everything had gone to plan, but we were going headfirst into this adventure, hoping that everything would work itself out. Och fina utsikt. Det var precis en tupp som gal, men han slutade precis. Och här är vår lilla gyt. 
Så där är en annan rit där. Um, och här är vår. Perhaps not the best welcome present. Thanks, pigeons. You seem to have made a nest for themselves on top of our um, only electricity box. And our fridge. Thanks. Wow, yeah, it was it was overwhelming being back. Whilst we may have had a plan for the overall chateau, we needed a plan to get ourselves in there within the next six months when our baby was due and the accommodation we had rented would run out. So the pressure was really on for us to figure out what we needed to do to make a part of the chateau habitable. When we bought the chateau, it was pretty much a blank slate, ground floor, moving onto the garden, first floor, and then second floor. And we've been spending most of our time in these these first few episodes really focusing on the the first floor knocking down these structures here so there's two walls there um, we also then had kind of the bathroom that was here the toilet that was there another wall that was here um, yeah in fact you can see all of that which is now gone um, we obviously had this set dividing wall in the Grand Salon, which is now gone as well. And then we also had another wall here, which is that old kind of 70s retro bedroom with cupboards and things in here. And so that's all that's all gone as well. So we've kind of got a very blank slate on this first floor now. And this is pretty much this section here. The plan is to make that into our own living area in addition to the second floor. So perhaps easier to see what we were we were striving for, which is essentially on the ground floor, this is at the garden level, to create this one bedroom sheet here, uh, in due course a two bedroom sheet here, and then up to the first floor where we'd have our living quarters, dining room, kitchen, lounge, and a guest bedroom, our office where we'll be able to do our work from for our leadership and well-being. Uh, webinars and things and then also the B&B &B area so the bed and breakfast where we'll have guest suites with ensuite bathrooms and and everything else and then the top level we'd have is the the main bedroom for us with uh, the his and hers wardrobes and the roof terrace the the family bathroom and then a storage area plus then and that staircase won't be there in fact but um bedroom for, for noah as well is the plan and then again more guest suites over here with a seminar space for hosting our, our retreats and a yoga room uh, to do exercise and, and relax and breathing exercise and all those sorts of things here so we'd had it all planned out but realistically in the time frame we had the only place that we could feasibly get done with a budget that we had we hadn't got any loans uh, we hadn't managed to sell our flat in London and the banks in France were not playing ball at all. And so we had limited resources with which to make something livable. And so this is the area that we basically decided to, to focus on because it was standalone and we could, you know, afford to, to, to do the works. Um, basically a one bed and bathroom with, you know, kitchen, diner, living area. We felt at the time that that, that was by far the best solution we had. But first, the small matter of the wine vat to demolish, <laughs> which was sitting right where our new kitchen was planned to be. So yeah, reunited with my wine vat, my nemesis. <laughs> Gonna start making a, a little bit of a dent in it today, but yeah, still, as you can see behind me, one whole wall to go, plus the, the floor there as well. So uh, we'll see how we get on.
you can see behind me, the, uh, <laughs> I managed to get the pneumatic drill stuck in the wall, so I'm going to have to drill around it with my other smaller jackhammer to try and uh, free it up. But, <laughs> fun and game is trying to do this sideways, I mean that thing weighs 40 kilos, so uh, a good workout. And with that, we'd made phenomenal progress taking down the wine vats. Well, I should probably point out, it wasn't just me. In that intervening period, uh, we had my parents, their friends Paul and Helen, uh, Nicole, all helping to clear the rubble that I had been creating through demolishing each of the walls of that extraordinarily tough wine vat. So a huge team effort to get to that stage. And we weren't quite there yet, but there's a final twist in the story that we'll reveal in the next episode where we nearly lost everything. You would be forgiven for thinking that I was the only one doing any work these first couple of weeks since I moved to France. And as the director, editor, producer, all round kind of important person in charge of this production. I guess it is in my gift to make it look that way. Although in fairness, someone wasn't quite as diligent at filming themselves doing the DIY. So the only footage we actually have and proof of Nicole doing work is this. So what are you doing? I am taking out all this mess here to see so we can see if we have a concrete floor, but it looks very promising. Which arguably doesn't do it justice, but more on that in the next episode. For any of you feeling bad about the wine vats taking a beating, rest assured that they did get their own back. <laughs> so I managed to stab myself with the, the rebar and had to go and get an emergency tetanus shot from the doctor. Note to self, <laughs> maybe not the best idea. Mm -hmm.